In Creole Parametric Sheet Metal mode, the Split Area command available from the Editing Overflow menu has three main uses. Let's take a look at them. The first one we'll look at allows you to take a surface and break it up into multiple different surfaces. For example, let me start off by creating a sketch. You can use either an internal or an external sketch, but let's create a, an external sketch. I'm going to select a datum plane and then use the sketch button. Let me go to my sketch view and let's also add in a sketch reference just so I can lock into this edge. And then I will create, let's make a center rectangle. I'll start it here and then drag it out so big and hit the middle mouse button. For the sake of this demonstration, I am not going to change the dimensions. Let's hit the check mark. And now with the sketch still selected, I will go to the editing overflow menu and then split area. And here we have the interface. You can see that right now we have an arrow indicating our sketch direction. Also, we have a projection direction. So you can see right now it is going towards the right side. I can click on the arrow and change it to the left side. You can see I can click back and forth all day long. Be aware though that if you use the arrow in the dashboard, it is a three-way direction button. Here's what I mean by that. Right now we have projection direction going towards the right. Click it again. It goes to the left, but if I click it one more time, it's going to end up going in both directions. So that's what we are getting. Let's also take a look at the split direction dropdown. Sometimes this matters. By default, it is going to create the split normal to the driving surface of the model. Those are the ones that appear in green if you go to a wireframe mode or you can make it normal to the offset surface. A lot of times these are the same, but be aware that you can control that. Let's hit the check mark to complete it. And now we've broken up some of the surfaces into multiple different surfaces, which you can see as I highlight the model. And now that we've broken them up, you can go to your rip command and I will choose to do a surface rip. And that allows me to select these individual surfaces. Let me select them on the other side in order to remove them from the model. Let's hit the check mark. And what I did right now, you can also accomplish in one step with the extruded cut command. But again, it's just something to be aware of. If you have a special situation where extruded cut is not going to work, hey, you can use that split area in conjunction with the surface rip command. All right, let's take a look at the second use for the split area. In this particular model, I have a number of surfaces with curvature in multiple directions. Let me use the control key in order to select a few of them in the model. And especially back in older versions of Pro Engineer, you would have trouble if you're trying to unbend a model that had surfaces with curvature in multiple directions. But they made a change to the algorithm a few years ago. In this particular model, if I go to the unbend command, well, it doesn't have any problem flattening it out because it figures out how to do a bunch of the various necessary deformations in order to get your flat pattern. Now, one thing I want you to take a look at, here we have this sort of triangular looking surface and this one corresponds to this particular surface over here in the flat. So when you let Creole Parametric do the automatic deformations in order to flatten, well, it is going to use its algorithm in order to figure out how to stretch that triangular surface in order to get it to be a flattened surface. And you may or may not like the assumptions that it makes. But anyhow, let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And that way we have flattened our model, even though it had curvature in two directions. This will not always work. Let's jump over to a different model in which we would have some issues flattening because of curvature in more than one direction. All right, here we are in a different part. It looks simple enough, but in this particular situation, if I go to the unbend command, 
Well, you see that it is not flattening out. If we go to the deformations tab, it is in red because it needs a few deformation surfaces. The problem that we have is that we have this particular surface, which has curvature in more than one direction. And if I go to the other side, well, we have a corresponding surface over there. In order to be able to flatten, it needs some additional surfaces selected to be deformed. I'm going to click in the collector for the deformation surfaces. And one way is by selecting adjacent surfaces that go out to the end of the part. You can see that we're getting a preview now on one side of the flattening. Let me rotate the model, hold down the control key, and select the corresponding surface on the other side. And now we are getting a flat pattern, but let's zoom in over here. Remember how in the previous model it took that small triangular surface and then sort of made it into a rectangle? In this particular situation, it's taking this particular surface and then it's making it into sort of a trapezoidal surface, how it is stretching it out. If you go to the deformation control tab on the dashboard, there are three different options for the deformation areas. And the first one is right now using blend boundaries, which is basically to put in a surface or sheet metal geometry that connects the edges that are flattened out. Another option in here is to rip the area out entirely. And when I choose rip the area out, well, right now it is still previewing the same. There's a third area here for sketch area, but just be aware that you have these th different options in here for handling those deformation areas. Let's hit the check mark so you can see the geometry that is being created. Well, now I'm going to take this unbend and let us delete it. Another way of being able to flatten out this part that by default isn't able to be flattened is by selecting different deformation areas from our different split areas. So I'm going to cancel out in order to create a split area. Let me go over to the model and I'm just going to go to the underside in order to do this. And let me figure out what plane I want to sketch on. Let's see, I think I want to sketch on the plane called front. And then let's click on the sketch button. And so what I am going to create in this particular situation is an area that acts as a bridge between the surface with curvature in multiple directions and the outside edges of the part. We're going to do that by sketching. And so I'm going to use the project command to grab two of the edges in here and I'll click on them and they have been projected onto my sketch plane. Let's zoom in over here. That's good for projecting. Now I need to close them off. So I will use the right mouse button to get to my sketch tools menu and then I'll create lines from here to here with the left mouse button. I will middle mouse click once so I can stay in line creation mode, but change my start point. Let's middle mouse button two times. And now you can see that we have our closed loop that is shaded in. So this is a good sketch for creating my split area. Let me hit the check mark. And now with the sketch still selected, I will go to the editing overflow menu and then use split area. And you can see the preview in orange of the area that is being created. So I can use that as a deformation area when I do my unbend. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm going to repeat that one more time. Sketch one was automatically hidden. If I want to, I can make it visible again. Let's go to the editing overflow and then split area. And I'm going to flip the direction. Oops, not that one. I want to flip the projection direction. So I will end up getting my split area over on the other side of the part. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And now that I've got my split areas to use, let's go to the unbend command. And then for deformations, last time I clicked in here and I selected these surfaces, but this time 
I'm going to select the split areas. So there's one split area and we immediately get a preview. And if I hold down the control key, I can select the other split area and then hit the check mark. And one thing to note is that because I'm using the split areas instead of the other surfaces, well, we end up with different geometry in the flat. Before we ended up having that sort of like trapezoidal surface, now we have more rectangular surfaces. So just be careful when you have these parts with curvature in multiple directions. Maybe they are going to be manufactured using some hydroforming method. You really should be talking to your sheet metal manufacturers about what kind of blank that they would use in order for creating the final sheet metal geometry or leave the flattening up to them. All right, so being able to flatten or unbend our sheet metal parts, that is a second use of the split areas. Let's jump over to a different part to take a look at the third and final use. Okay, here I have a very simple part. Let's now go to the unbend overflow menu and I want to show you that there are a couple of additional commands in here. These are a bit obscure. These are used for unbending parts that again have curvature in multiple directions. One is called the transitional unbend. When I click on it, you can see that it uses something called a model dialog box and a menu manager and we also have the get select menu. One of the things that is required for selecting in this one is fixed geometry, like an edge that you want to use as what's staying fixed when you are unbending the part. Let me cancel out of this first one and then go back to the unbend overflow menu. There's another one called a cross section driven unbend. And again, when I go to that, hasn't been updated because again, it's not used that much, but it does require the selection of some fixed edges. And maybe I want to select a fixed edge in the middle of the part here, and I don't have one. So in this particular situation, hey, let's cancel out. I'll go to the editing overflow. Let's choose split area. I will select the surface I want to sketch on. Let me go to my sketch view and I will use the center rectangle since it's right there. And I'm just gonna sketch a big rectangle. I'm not gonna bother changing the dimensions or have it lock into my parts geometry. Let's hit the check mark. And you can see a preview of the areas that would be split out. And once again, we have a three-way arrow that's available from the projection direction button. I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting the arrow pointing in both sides. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And I just want to point out again, you can either use an internal sketch or an external sketch. I'll hit the check mark. And that way I have some additional edges to select if I was using a command like a transitional unbend and I wanted to pick my fixed geometry and I wanted to use this particular edge as opposed to some other different geometry. So again, that third use of the split area command is to create edges in your sheet metal geometry if you don't have one already for certain of the less used commands that require the selection of those edges. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.